is also the. This is Buddy Talk for Baton Rouge. Let's talk LSU football. The Bayou Bengals take on the Tigers of Auburn on ESPN. And things are going to get icy. On its better days, this battle has literally shaken the earth and lifted fire to the sky. Where this day, the sideline becomes the front line. Jerry DiNardo vowed to bring the magic back to the bayou. After suffering through seven losses last season, the LSU faithful are getting restless. No doubt, wins are a must for DiNardo. New Auburn coach Tommy Tuberville takes over a football family recovering from turmoil. The Tigers want to return to the glory days of their recent past. Their chance starts tonight. Tonight, as twilight skies approach, it's an SEC clash of the Tigers. Auburn taking on LSU from Baton Rouge. Hello, everyone. I'm Adrian Karsten. Here on the field at Tiger Stadium, you can feel the buzz that goes with any pregame here at LSU. But you know, you can always tell that there's a difference when it comes to a conference game because there's always a little bit more intensity from all the fans. Everything's a little bit more serious and a lot more intimidating. They play, call this place Death Valley. They always have and with very good reason because many claim that this is the most difficult place in the nation to play a college football game. But in actuality, during the 90s, the Bayou Bengals have a losing record against SEC opponents. Two of those losses have come at the hands of the Auburn Tigers, and one of those has come when Tommy Tuberville was head coach back at Ole Miss. Well, tonight, Charlie Steiner joins Mike Gottfried from the booth. The kickoff is coming in just a moment. But right now, let's return to the studio and check in with Brian Kenny. Adrian, thank you very much. Brian Kenny, Rodney Gilmore here. Of course, there's the big three in the state of Florida going on. Two of them right now. Let's get right to it. Start things off for LSU. Send you out to the game. We'll see you at the half. Bye-bye. Pep SPN's presentation of college football is brought to you by Pep Boys. Cars like us. People love us. And by Sonic, America's driver. And we welcome you to Death Valley. And for the next three hours or so, this is going to be the Tiger Television Network. It's the SEC season opener for LSU and Auburn. And for the past three years, Rondell Mealy has spent most of his time in the considerable shadow of Kevin Falk. But on this Saturday, he will have center stage in the sunlight all to himself. Hi, everybody. I'm Charlie Steiner sitting in for Ron Franklin. Of course, you know Mike Gottfried and LSU as far as they go, not only today, but all season long. It's going to be on the considerable legs of Rondell Mealy. Well, Rondell Mealy is probably the marquee player in this ball game, and he gives them a great running threat. And they need that LSU because Rohan Davies is going to start at the quarterback position. He's a sophomore, inexperienced, and over his shoulder on the sidelines is going to be Josh Booty, a highly publicized recruit, waiting to get in the ball game. Auburn, on the other hand, a team in transition, a new coach this year. Well, I've always said, and it's said, been saying for the last two years, they don't have a lot of game touchdown makers so the defenses really have to has to set the offense up special teams also and this is a defense that returns eight starters and they force a lot of turnovers charlie they got to give their offense a short field 40 yard 30 yard drives for them to do well today on offense tommy tuberville spending his 45th birthday this afternoon here in death valley his team won the toss deferred so lsu will receive and Jerry DiNardo in his fifth year is the head coach of the LSU Tigers. They are 32 16 and one under the Brooklyn born DiNardo. Rob Baronis will be kicking it off for the Auburn Tigers and Dominic Davis is standing deep way back at the goal line. Gerald Myers is back there too. It is an absolutely gorgeous day. A cloudless sky in the SEC opener. The Auburn and LSU is underway. And this is Dominic Davis. Across the 20 to the 25-yard line. 
Now let's take a look at the Dell starting lineups. The LSU Tigers. Rohan Davey is the quarterback. Banks will be blocking for Mealy in the backfield. Kips the tight end. Abram Booty and Robert Royal. The splits and flankers and up front. The sophomore center Jason Underwood anchors the LSU offensive line. It'll be first and ten from the 24-yard line. And this game is sold out 80,000 in Death Valley. Mealy for just a couple of yards. And now let's take a look at the Auburn Tigers defensively. Washington, Brumbaugh, Carson, and Reese. Brumbaugh coming off a redshirt season with a bad knee last year. Haven Fields, the linebacker, has been having a field day through the first two games of the season for the Tigers. And in the secondary, Rob Pate with a couple of picks last week. So on second down, and eight yards to go at the 26. That's Jarrell Myers, and he doesn't get much of anything. Charlie, it's going to be important for LSU and both these teams offensively to give their quarterback a little help. LSU's offense in their first two games on third down, they only converted three out of 17, so they didn't keep the chains moving, and you, you want Davey to get some confidence. Third down, seven yards to go. They have to get to the 34-yard line. Rohan Davey, who has beaten out Josh Booty and Craig Nall for the quarterback's start. And there's no certainty he's going to be the quarterback at the end of the season. Much less end of the game. Davey over the middle, and it's picked off! That's Kenny Kelly! Out of bounds inside the 20-yard line! Davey just waited too long trying to get the ball to Robert Royal. Kelly just waiting in center field for this interception. When you're going to throw the deep ball like this, you can't wait this long. You can see Kelly just sitting on the post route, and that's exactly what they have to do. The defense has to turn the ball over to give Ben Lear the short field to play on. A 31-yard return on the interception by Kelly, his first of the year. And let's see now if Auburn can capitalize on this big turnover deep in LSU territory. Rusty Williams, a single back. And whistles blow, no play. Might be a delay of game. Before the ball was snapped, 25 seconds, clock expired. Five-yard penalty still for the pass. Well, that's a momentum buster right off the top. Let's take a look now at the starting lineup for Auburn. Ben Leard, the quarterback, Rusty Williams, who didn't even carry the ball last year, is going to be the primary running back this year. Jack Schweiger, the tight end. Caught a touchdown pass last week, the first of his career. He's a senior. And up front, Geno James has started every single game of his Auburn career, and he's a senior. Charlie, they're calling the play from the sideline. They're giving, the, they're setting up in their offensive set, waiting for LSU, and then they call it from the sideline. That's the delay. Here's Leard to throw, flag on the play. And a loss on the play. Rusty Williams brought down by Charles Smith. Usually where that flag it's going to be holding probably on Auburn. Tackled by Charles Smith. An illegal motion. Oh, illegal Lineman motion. moving at the snap. Al Ford heads up the SEC officiating crew. So two plays from scrimmage for Auburn. And to this point they've taken too much time and and yet another penalty. Now, the LSU up front. They play a 3-4. Johnny Mitchell and Jarvis Green come in from the ends. William Smith, Dunson, and Alexander, the linebackers. And in the secondary, Roman and Booker, the corners, are special. So on second down now. And 17 yards to go. First two plays will produce penalties for the Auburn offense. And here's the third play. And it's complete. Here's Williams brought down inside the 20-yard line. So it's still third and long. 
Charlie, again, what Noel Mazzoni, the offensive coordinator, and Tommy Tuberville are doing, because they've got a young quarterback, Ben Lear, really inexperienced. They're allowing Auburn to go to the line of scrimmage. Then they're looking at the secondary coverage of LSU and then calling the play from the sideline. Ben Lear will get it, and then he knows what play to call. So they're trying to set it up or make it easy for Ben Lear. Third down and nine. Lear to junior. Dauphin, Georgia. He's got four wides and nobody behind him. Throwing over the middle, it's incomplete. <laughs> Jeremy Lawrence in on the play defensively. Late flag, it's going to be pass interference probably on, on LSU. Late flag. Tavares Robinson, the intended receiver. Defensive pass interference. Automatic first down to the bottom flag. Oh, that's a killer. Over the middle, Charles Smith, number 35, is going to hit number five, Traveris Robinson. They had a good call. First down now at the 18. Williams a single back. Williams to the 15 and down at the 14-yard line. Cornerback Fred Booker came up to make the tackle. Charlie LSU now needs a defensive stand. Ben Leard, the quarterback, he'll look to the sideline. Get the play call from Noel Mazzoni. Now they're in a little bit more a too tight in set now trying to knock uh, LSU off the ball a little bit. Trying to get a little toughness here out of his Auburn offensive line. He said at the top of the broadcast, Mike, for Auburn to win, they have to play from a short field. And to this point, they're doing that, but it's taking them forever just to get down from where they began at the 20. And this time, they're inside the 10. Not quite to the first down marker. Thomas Dunson, the inside linebacker, made the tackle. And a terrific block by Cole Kubelik, the uh, center. What Auburn's trying to find is a is a running back. Rusty Williams gets the shot. He's been in so many positions. He was a tailback when he came here, a wide receiver, a strong safety, a fullback, and now finally back to his original position. Third down and two. They must get inside the eight. No flag. There is a flag now. It looks like LSU's offside. They both linebackers, Dunson and Bubba Alexander, just look like they tried to time Ben Leard's count. The line judge, Al Matthews, made the call. Late flag. There they are. Yeah, both linebackers up too tight. You still, if you're Jerry DiNardo and Lou Tepper, you're still looking for your defense. This is an offense with not a lot of confidence. So you still have a chance to hold them out and hold them to a field goal attempt. They can hold them to three. It'll be a moral victory early. First and goal at the five-yard line. It's Reggie Worthy flanked down to the bottom of your screen. Here's Williams, and he gets a couple. Jarvis Green, the defensive end, and Clarence LeBlanc came up from the strong safety spot to make the tackle. Charlie, when you've been so poor at running the football, I don't care what you've been given, it's still tough for you to get in. And LSU now has a chance to shut the door on the Auburn's offense right here. And as you said, a moral victory, a couple penalties and a turnover early. They, they want to hold them to three points here. Second and goal at the five. Junior quarterback who completed his first 12 passes in a row last week against Idaho. And whistles blow again. This is sloppy early. I think it's another delay game. The ball was 
And what's going to have to happen, Tommy Tuberville, the sideline, they're going to have to get it on a little quicker for Ben Leard. When you, when you get a play call from the sideline, it's fine if you don't have movement. But they were trying to move the uh, H back in motion, so you got to consider that. One of the reasons why Tuberville has gone with Ben Leard was his ability to make those changes at the line of scrimmage, but so far, struggling here in the first quarter, in the first five minutes of Well, play. they got to get the play into him sooner. He, he knows what he's doing, but they've got to get it in a little sooner. Now back at the 10. Incomplete. It was intended for the tight end, Lorenzo Diamond, and it was right in his hands. Charlie, I keep saying it, but it's a no-confidence offense there, and, they, and they're going to get better on this offensive group. And Tommy Tuberville, you get frustrated because you get the ball down there in this situation. Now they're going to bring in all the wide receivers, try to throw it in. And Clifton Robinson, we talked about him. He's the probably the best skilled guy they have, number 15. Reggie Worthy flanked way out to the top. And Clifton Robinson down there at the bottom by the 10-yard line marker. Third and goal. Incomplete, nearly intercepted. Fred Booker all over the intended receiver. Clarence LeBlanc on the blitz, and that's what you want out of a defense. New Timber got a win right there on that defensive surge. Ben Leard. Just doesn't have time to get it off. Clarence LeBlanc, number 18, just belting him. And so on fourth down, Damon Duvall, who is the punter by trade. But Robert Baronis, last week's field, kick, field goal kicker, didn't do all that well. But Duvall does and gives Auburn the early 3-0 lead. Auburn had a gift, and all they could do was cash in three. Which sports center do you watch? Now at 6 p.m. only on ESPN. I like to think of myself as an innovator who started a company, Dell Computer, around an idea that everybody should be doing business directly with one another. One Here, our world is beer. We're looking at Memorial Tower here on the campus of Louisiana State University on a beautiful Saturday afternoon in Baton Rouge. And so Auburn was given a gift. The ball at the 20-yard line of LSU, and all they could do was convert the field goal, and they've got the early lead. So now, LSU about to get its second possession. As Rob Baronis will be kicking it off with Dominic Davis and Darrell Myers standing deep. and out of the end zone. So LSU will take over first and 10 at their own 20. Charlie, here's what happens. Reggie Worthy, the wide receiver on the last play. Clarence LeBlanc, LeBlanc is going to blitz. Reggie Worthy has to look for the ball. He has to sight adjust a little quicker. Ben Laird's going to find the right receiver, but Reggie Worthy does not look for the football. And so now LSU takes over. Second possession, first and ten from their own 20-yard line, running out of the eye. Rundell Mueller. has been the understudy for Kevin Falk low these many years, finally getting his chance to be the everyday player. He loses a yard on the play as Haven Fields comes in from the strong side linebacker spot to make the tackle. Well, my first indication in this ball game is they're not going to run the ball against Auburn's defense until they open it up and throw the football a little bit more because this is a good defensive front. Leonardo Carson, Quentin Reese, Jimmy Brumball, Marcus Washington, they've been around for a long time. Eight starters back in that defense. On second and 11, here's Davey rolling, rolling, and nearly picked off by Rob Pate, who had two of them last week. Now let's check in with Brian Penny. He's got an update for us. Brian. Charlie, Ohio and Ohio State at Ohio State had never been beaten by a MAC team coming into this one, but it's 10-10 in the third. Michael Wiley running 37 yards, set up a one-yard touchdown plunge. He's got 77 yards, and the Buckeyes do lead by a touchdown, but it's close, Charlie. On third down now at 11. LSU having trouble getting out of the throwing line offensively. <laughs> 
flags flying. They're going to go back five more yards. This is not a pretty picture being painted early. Before the ball was snapped, movement for the offensive line, five yards, still third. Two offenses looking for identity. And that's what you have in this ball game. This game's going to be won by a defense in special teams and field position. And so now third down and 16. Really the single back. Three wides, two to the left. Maybe in trouble. Brought down by Jimmy Brumbaugh, 96. Brumbaugh yeah, sat down last year with a knee injury. Comes up with his second sack of the season. Charlie, he's an excellent football player. 229 tackles in his first three years, and then 11 now uh, the season he got hurt. Corey Gibbs standing deep. Gibbs with a 41-yard punt out. Excellent field position again for Auburn inside LSU's 50-yard line. They'll mark it at the 47 when we come back. Tonight, we had the perfect meal. Possession is again inside the 50 of LSU, and you said at the beginning of the broadcast, Mike, that for Auburn to succeed, they'd have to play on a short field today. They need a short field till Ben Lear gets some confidence. These freshman receivers develop a little bit. Clifton Robinson gets more in the plan. Three wide, and that's Clifton Robinson moving right up next to the quarterback, Lear. And now Auburn looks like they're going to be calling a timeout. I think there's something in the equipment. We have a charge timeout for the offensive team for wearing equipment improperly. I think somebody's knee pads were not pulled all the way down. It's going to cost them a timeout. So to this point, Auburn has two penalties. LSU has three. Auburn has been penalized because their knee pad, well, somebody's knee pad is too low. Well, they just get a timeout. It hasn't been pretty. No. <laughs> I think they'd rather give up the five yards in the timeout. Adrian, what's going on downstairs? Charlie, I'm not sure who the cat is and who the mouse is here between uh, Coach Tommy Tuberville and uh, defensive coordinator Lou Tepper on the LSU side. Lou Tepper signals in every defensive call for his Bayou Bengal defense. He is waiting as long as he can. I'm watching the defensive backs and the linebackers move up to the line, then back off. Laird looks at them, looks over at Tuberville. Meanwhile, the clock runs. Believe it or not, in actuality, this timeout that they had to take was a blessing in disguise for them because they had no idea what kind of play they were going to run. So it's just a waiting game at this point every single time they come to the line of scrimmage between Tuberville and Tepper. I'll tell you who the mouse is, Adrian. It's Lou Tepper right now because Tommy Tupperville is a little bit gambling a little bit more uh, at Auburn right now. So far, with all the penalties and timeouts, Auburn is averaging 1.8 yards per snap. And they still lead three to nothing. So it's first and ten. And here is Clifton Robinson. Brought down by Charles Smith near the 45 yard line just a gain of a couple well they're searching for a running back Clifton Robinson in high school Charlie out of Naples Florida he rushed for over 5800 career yards and you can see what he's done so far this season suspended the first game but uh, he gives them the best threat he's their best athlete back there as a running back so on second down eight they have to get to about the 37 yard line of the Tigers for another first down Hasn't been smooth sailing for either offense. Over the middle, and it's complete to the 25-yard line. Ryan Hooker with the first down. Charlie, Ben Lear threw that ball like a seasoned quarterback, and he's been going through so much. I, I have so much uh, admiration for Ben Lear because of the situation. He started against Virginia last year and then got benched. He kept... Uh, Involved, he brought the other two quarterbacks over his apartment two days a week, taught him the offense. And Hooker was tackled by Booker. On first down, there's Clifton Robinson inside the 20-yard line, met by Fred Booker. 
Booker and Hooker. Yeah. You got you got that going, John. <laughs> I'm not going there. <laughs> Fred Booker, junior from Hammond, Louisiana. And he has been ever present on the field so far this afternoon on second down and about five. Then Clifton Robinson in a single setback. Here's Robinson again. And this time he gets nothing. Runs into a wall of white and gold. And a pretty good offensive line uh, by Auburn. A lot of size. Last year they had trouble running the football. A year before, they, they just seem since Stephen Davis has graduated uh, from Auburn, they've just been sliding further and further down running the football. So it's third down and five yards to go. So one real offensive play to speak of to this point for the Tigers. Make it two. First down inside the 10 yard line. That's Tavares Robinson, the freshman from Miami. All of a sudden now Lou Tepper's coming after Ben Lear. Anytime you cross the 30 yard line against the defensive coordinators they they get the urge to shoot the gun and uh, and blitz people. And Traveris Robinson reads the blitz on the outside. Ben Lear reads it also and just releases it very quickly to Robinson for the completion. Auburn with two tight ends now Schweiger and Lorenzo Diamond in the lineup. Robinson the single setback. Here's Lear throwing near side, and he finds Schweiger, the tight end, out at about the seven-yard line. Clarence LeBlanc runs him out. I'll tell you what, Charlie, you're going to see this play again because Clifton Robinson lined up at the tailback position, was looping out on the left side. No one went with him. So that's going to be a call when they get back inside the 15-yard line. They're going to remember that Second call. Down. Second and goal at the six-yard line. <laughs> Auburn with moderate success inside the 20. Clifton Robinson inside the one-yard line. Lionel Thomas upended him and saved the tackle or saved the touchdown. Charlie, this would mean so much for this Auburn football team for the season, not just in this ball game, but for the rest of the season because this offense starting looks like to me like the offensive line is starting to take over. They may have found a running back in Clifton Robinson. Ben Leard is operating this offense into high efficiency, so uh, this team may get some little confidence here in the first quarter. Third and goal, and you are looking at Lorenzo Carson. Leonardo Carson, the big defensive end, and Robinson is brought down behind the line of scrimmage, and then with second effort gets back to the line of scrimmage, but still short of the goal line. Jarvis Green with the I, touchdown saving I, tackle. I think you got to go for this touchdown right here. Tommy Tuberville's got a tough call here, and with 406, he's going to go for the field goal. And the reason is, Charlie, it's, it's very simple. I don't know if he has a lot of confidence in his offense yet. The other side of the coin is the LSU offense hasn't shown anything. No, and so you might as well put another three on the board. And conversely, let him start back inside the one. I'd go for it. It's a gambling style of coaching that Tommy Tupperville did when he was at Ole Miss, and he brings over here to Auburn, and that makes it tough on the other team, especially when you when you show this in tape. Look at this play. That talk about over relaxed. The shoulder, yeah, huh? you talk about being relaxed now, just over the shoulder for a touchdown. They it, saw something in the tape where LSU came down hard on the left side. And now the extra point. No fake that time, and it's 10 to nothing, Auburn. This is the last thing in the world the LSU Tigers figured would happen to them on this Saturday afternoon in Baton Rouge. The mayor has no authority to run the schools. But I can and have provided for... Uh, at the moment, Death Valley is just that. I mean, there are about 5,000 Auburn Tiger fans here, and they are the only ones making noise. The LSU Tiger fans are in stunned silence and disbelief. But just a nice call because what had to happen is 
when you watch the tape of the first two ball games, LSU sold out on that left side, so Tommy Tupperville took advantage of it. And how about the flip from the holder, Jacob Allen? It was so matter of fact. Now, LSU in a deep hole. Bob Baronis with another monstrous kickoff. And the LSU Tigers take over again from their own 20-yard line, trailing by 10. Let's go back to the studio now. Brian Kenny's got an update for us. Brian. Charlie, Wisconsin, number eight in the nation, facing Cincinnati, a 2-9 team last year. They lost 16 starters, but quarterback Deontay Kenner running in from five yards away. They're up on top 14-6. to six. Ron Dane, though, coming back. He puts it in 18 yards away. They missed the two-point conversion, though, so still a stunner. Cincinnati leads by two. Just think how Troy State feels. They beat Cincinnati. <laughs> Rondell Mealy finds a hole. And Mealy across the 25-yard line. Brought down by Emily Trone, the free safety, and a flag. It's all been set up by good defense and special teams and field positions for Auburn. They don't want to give it away here with a cheap penalty after the play was over personal foul against the offense the I mean nothing is going right for LSU see if we can see it here yeah, they won. yes Al Jackson And so now it is second down and from here to New Orleans. And that hurts because it was a dead ball foul. They have to get to the 30 and the line of scrimmage is their own 13. Wide open but out of bounds was Gerald Myers at the 45 yard line. The Rohan Davey was kind of rushed out of the pocket but he had a wide open receiver 30 yards down the field. Charlie Larry Casher did a nice job of sitting on the route. Abram Booty was running on the top of the screen and there wasn't any place for Rohan Davey to go. He sprinted to that side. He wanted to throw the ball but Larry Casher's not being threatened. He's sitting right on the routes. Very good corner on third and 17. Casher had an outstanding game last week. And David, a little screen. And out to the 19-yard line, Gerald Myers. Doesn't even get back to the original line of scrimmage. Leonardo Carson with the play. And it is fourth down, and the natives are restless. Well, the Auburn fans are happy, Charlie, because they've seen good defense, offense, and special teams here in the first quarter. Corey Gibbs in his 41-yard punting average gets off a beauty. And back at the 40-yard line, Keith Cooper, flag on the play, brought down at the 50-yard line, likely to come back. Thomas Dunson made the tackle. A 40-yard punt, nine-yard return, and probably all for naught. During the return, the block in the back by the receiving team, 10 yards from the spot. Charlie, here's where LSU has to make some hay. Right now, Lou Tepper, the defensive coordinator, now the field positions at least change decently for LSU. Now they need to stop this Auburn offense, give their offense a, a field position chance. So this is critical right here for Lou Tepper. It's the first time the Tigers are starting a series in their own territory. Back at the 31-yard line. Rusty Williams, a single setback. Williams has some room. Rusty Williams down the sideline and right out of bounds near the 40-yard line of LSU by Ryan Clark. A pickup of 28 yards on the play. So much for field position. It now has changed back to Auburn. And Rusty Williams uh, really hit that hole perfect on the counter play. Good blocking by Geno James and Kendall Simmons. 28 yards. 
Rusty Williams, who had but one carry all of last year. Trips right. Hand off to Robinson running left. Robinson brought down at the 35 yard line. A pickup of six on the play. And the linebacker, Brady James, the freshman out of West Monroe, Louisiana, made the tackle. Charlie, when you think of this ball club and what happened last year with Terry Bowden and the and the uh, resignation in the middle of the year and then all of a sudden Bill Oliver taking over and then Tommy Tuberville taking over. Sometimes you forget the effect it has on players. Now they, this is a team with little confidence but they're gaining here fast. Second down four. This time Robinson doesn't get a thing and once again Brady James wearing number 11 comes in from his linebacker spot and takes him down and Brady James is trying to get this defense moving a little bit they, they look a little lackadaisical right now like they've been punched and uh, and they're staggering a little bit here they haven't gone down yet but they're staggered figuring I'm with a former boxing guy <laughs> I heard there's a fight tonight in Vegas right now LSU not putting up much of a fight at all third down Laird with time. Sideline. Touchdown! Ronnie Daniels. How the LSU Tigers have no idea what's hit them. How about Ben Lear? He is growing fast as a quarterback. Ronnie Daniels, a freshman receiver, the coach has said couldn't catch a cold in the spring. He's making plays every week. You just saw the 5,000 or so Auburn Tiger fans. They are going crazy. The LSU Tiger fans are in utter disbelief. No back set, Charlie. Ben Leard had time, first of all. That's the key in a coverage situation. There's good protection right here. Now all of a sudden the route, he sees Daniels beating Booker on the left corner, hits him wide open. They had him double, Booker and Clarence LeBlanc. Daniels had two touchdown passes in his first game. Picks up another one here against LSU, and if you're a college football fan, you couldn't be happier for Ben Laird. Ronnie Daniels turned 22 yesterday. He played three years in the Montreal Expo organization before returning to school. Happy birthday, one day late. Coming up tomorrow, week two of ESPN Sunday Night Football. At a quarter past eight Eastern time, Doug Flutie and the Bills take on the Jets as both teams look to rebound from opening week losses. And then on ABC's Monday Night Football, Jamal Anderson and the Atlanta Falcons face the Dallas Cowboys, ESPN and ABC, your exclusive home for primetime NFL football. And the Auburn Tigers looking like they're ready for primetime players tonight. Quarterback Ben Lear. Jarrell Myers. And he fails to get past the 15 yard line. Charlie's talking about Ben Leard, you know, being happy for him because his situation just turned sour. You know, to get benched and, and all of a sudden he thought about transferring, he thought about quitting. Uh, his mother didn't go to the games anymore, and Adrian's got more on that story. But all of a sudden, he just keeps waiting his turn. He gets a coaching change. He fits in this offense, and Noel Mazzoni, who he's talking to right there, has a nice quarterback on his hands. Rohan Davy, just two of five for seven yards and one interception. Now here's Davy throwing, sideline, in and out of the hands of Abram Booty. Now here's what happens on the LSU sideline. The more they do the Lawrence Welk deck, the one, two, three kick, is now you start to look over in the sideline because they have they have a quarterback controversy whether they want it or not. Rohan Davies the starter, Josh Booty's the highly publicized guy, Craig Knoll's the guy that started the first game. So Rohan Davies didn't want to start like this. He wanted some help from his teammates. Josh Booty and Craig Knoll watching from the sideline. 
And on second down and ten from the eye. Maybe again with time. Throwing to nobody in particular. And now Jarrell Myers, the intended receiver. Davey is really beginning to hear. It. See, he's pressing, Charlie, because his offensive line hasn't helped him. The running game hasn't been there. And all of a sudden now he's trying to do it all by himself right now. And you, it looked like he pushed the football there rather than throw it. And he is looking over his shoulder because he knows that uh, like Sparky Anderson used to put the quick hook out on the pitchers that uh, Jerry DiNardo may do that for him. On third down and ten. In the shotgun. Baby in trouble. A lot of trouble. Fumbles the football. Auburn's got it. Marcus Washington with a big hit. 96, you saw Jimmy Brumbaugh. But Marcus Washington with the hit. And Fields with the recovery. And you have to feel bad for Rohan Davey because he's just trying to make something happen. Nothing's open. I'm telling you, the corners have just snuffed out the passing game. They're sitting on the routes. And once again, the Auburn Tigers, who came in with a very iffy offense, have been given yet another gift, the second turnover. And this time, they will begin this series of plays at the 17, but Ben Laird didn't like what the LSU defense had to offer. That's good defense, Charlie. And so with 17 seconds left in the first quarter, as far as LSU is concerned, the first quarter can't end fast enough. Change is ever. LSU Tigers is it? They've been for the birds. The Auburn Tigers, on the other hand, the recipient of yet another turnover, first and ten. LSU 17 yard line. Clifton Robinson breaks a tackle and brought down inside the 15 at about the 13 yard line by linebacker Charles Smith. Charlie, Travis Green also in on the play. Excuse me, Charlie. This was the play last time that Auburn was down here that Clifton Robinson came out of the backfield left side. The quarters ended, but look for Clifton Robinson down here. The LSU Tigers need smelling salts at the end of the first round of this prize fight. It has been all Auburn, including that snappy little face. 17 nothing. In the first quarter, LSU amassed all of 15 offensive yards, Auburn 133. The Tigers with almost 10 minutes of time of possession, and they were aided by some sloppy LSU play. As you see, three of their four drives have begun inside LSU territory, and this is the fourth. Laird finds Clifton Robinson. It's a fumble, and it's out of bounds, and LSU has got it. Ryan Clark with the hit. Jarvis Green with the recovery, and that is just what LSU so desperately needed. Charlie, that, that's the exact play that in the first quarter that they busted LSU, and Clifton Robinson was wide open, but they played it this time. All of a sudden, he goes outside. Now he's going to be man to man with Brian Clark. He comes from the safety position, made the hit, and caused the fumble. Now LSU and Rohan Davey got to do something with it. Jarvis Green did an excellent job of keeping the ball in bound. Mealy gets maybe to the line of scrimmage, and so far, Rondell Mealy being the featured back, it's uh, not worked out. Well, the, the, the defensive line of Auburn's control the line of scrimmage. First down might be the best down for Rohan Davy to throw rather than get behind the sticks and then try to force the throw in there because this defensive line controlling the line of scrimmage not allowing them to run. Second down and 11. Davy from the shotgun with four wide. 
completes it out of bounds at the 31 yard line for the tight end Kyle Kipps. And now an update, and here's Brian Kenny. Thank you, Charlie. Penn State leading Miami 17 to 3, but James Jackson's got 70 yards on 22 carries, 18 yards right here. Goes to the outside, he's in, so it's 17 10. Penn State up on top. About a minute and change left in that game in the third quarter, rather. Meantime, Notre Dame could drop to one and three. They trail Michigan State 20 to 13. Michigan State has the ball. Charlie? Oh, Bob Davis. The world are hurt. Yeah, they better get them this year, though, because they, they're a young football team. On third down, for Davy in the shotgun with time over the middle. And it's complete to the 45 yard line. That's Reggie Robinson and a first down to the midfield strike, a pickup of 19. That's what the doctor ordered for Rohan Davy. Now he gets a completion, a couple completions to Reggie Robinson. Now feeling a little confident. And the passing game now suddenly started to throw curl routes, inside routes, which Rohan Davey throws a little bit better. LSU, line of scrimmage, their own 49-yard line. Here's Mealy brought down behind the line of scrimmage. John Weldon made a great play, the sophomore from Cordell, Georgia. Let's go downstairs. Adrian, what do you have for us? Well, Charlie, you and Mike need to know that Mealy is not playing at 100%. About two series ago, he slightly pulled the inside his right groin, and they've been doing the best they can to stretch him out. But I'm watching him carefully. When he's not involved in the play, he gets past the line of scrimmage. He slows down right to, to stop. So he's playing with some kind of pain out there. If Mealy is unable to continue, it would be Dominic Davis, a freshman from Bow Ridge, Louisiana, waiting to get his turn. And a very good freshman, Charlie. On second. And long. Incomplete. Intended again for Mealy and Alex Lincoln busts up the play. Now, Alex Lincoln is a great story. He attends Mississippi College. He played football at Murphy High School in Mobile, Alabama. Wasn't recruited, walked on to Mississippi College. He transferred to Auburn, walked on. His dad's a big Auburn fan. And he said when he called his dad and told him he had a scholarship, his dad cried and just he's living through Alex and he was man to man on Mealy in the last play and he had 13 tackles in the first two games for the Auburn Tigers and Johnny on the spot now LSU 0 for 4 in third down situations and now 0 for 5 it's intercepted that's Adlai Trone down the sideline at the 42-yard line of LSU. Charlie, anytime you have a quarterback throw across their body and back their feet up, usually it's going to be an interception. His footwork, Rohan Davies' footwork on that play was not very good. You're going to see Davey. Quentin Reese is pressuring him, but watch him drop back, not follow through. That's an all-arm, but caused by Quentin Reese, and that caused the interception. And so once again, Auburn begins the series inside LSU territory. At the 43, Rusty Williams, a single setback, trips right. Throwing over the middle, and it's complete. That's Marquise Cooper inside the 25 to the 22-yard line and another first down. Charlie, what made that play is a little cheap fake by Ben Leard, but it helped Thomas Dunson, the linebacker, just long enough to get the ball over his hands to get the ball to Marquise Cooper, who's nicknamed the Lizard. I guess that's because he's 5'7", 160. Tough to tackle. That's a charming nickname <laughs> to come home to. Uh, first and ten at the 23. Not much for Rusty Williams. Clarence LeBlanc makes the tackle right near the line of scrimmage. Well, I've been really impressed with Ben Leard. Huh? I just uh, watched him last year and saw all that unfold, but uh, he has come out a different quarterback in this ball game. He's just growing as this game goes on with confidence of knowing where LSU's defense is and how to attack it. And on the other side of the field, Rohan Davis must be wondering not how we had it planned today. On second down and ten, Lear throwing for the end zone. Incomplete intended for Marquise Cooper. 
Ryan Clark in on the play defensively saving what could have been a crushing touchdown. What Ben Leard sees on this play is the blitz is coming so he knows he's got Marquise Cooper on the fade route. Had everything he wants. Here's the blitz. They pick it up. He's got Marquise Cooper just didn't put enough air under the ball. Ryan Clark with a pretty good defensive play to stop that touchdown. Third down and ten. Trips right. And Laird from the shotgun. And a bad snap. He's in trouble. And Jeremy Lawrence seals the deal back at the 42. A loss of 16 on the play. Charlie, I think the center, Kubelik, snapped the ball, and Ben Laird wasn't ready. Usually, quarterback gives him a signal by lifting up his leg, and then the snap can come any time after that. But I think Ben Laird was still looking over the defense, and the ball was snapped. And so what might have been a field goal try turns into a punting opportunity. Dominic Davis standing back, awaiting the punt from Damon Duvall. And too much punt. It'll be first and 10 for LSU at the 20 following that 39 yard punt. And that bad snap costs Auburn. We're coming back. NFL tonight, Tuesday through Sunday. ESPN's presentation of college football is brought to you by Nationwide insurance financial services on your side and by tgi friday in here it's always friday with 10 minutes and 52 seconds left in the first half the ovation you hear is for the arrival of quarterback josh booty on to replace rohan davy davy thought he was going to play the entire game today Instead, he didn't even play the entire first half. Let's see if Josh Booty can do something now as he hands off to Rondell Mealy. And Mealy's got some room. Mealy to the 41 yard line, run out of bounds by Rodney Creighton. A pickup of 21 and a first down. Well, usually when a new quarterback comes in, the crowd gets in it, but uh, what happens on this play is just well blocked. Al Jackson, the pulling guard, opens up. Rondell Mealy gets in the secondary, but that's what they need. They need some big plays against this Auburn defense. Tough defense. And now from the eye, first and ten, Josh Booty, who spent three years in the Florida Marlin organization. And that time, Mealy gets nothing at all. Let's go back now to the studio. Brian Kenny's got an update. Brian? Yes, Charlie, go back now to Penn State and Miami. Nittany Lions up on top in the fourth quarter, 17 to 10, but Kenny Kelly back looking for somebody, buying himself some time, lets it rip, 40 yards, Santana Moss is into the end zone. We have a tie game. Charlie, back to you. You know, there were very few teams that could afford to lose Edger and James, but Miami is certainly one of them, and Rohan Davey is a Miami resident. It came down to Rohan Davey and Kenny Kelly at LSU was recruiting quarterback. To Jarrell Myers, and that's into Auburn territory at the 47-yard line, and that's a first down. Pick up of 10 on the play. Rohan Davey, we talked to him earlier in the week, and he was under the impression, and certainly Jerry DiNardo led us to believe that also, that he was going to be the quarterback from beginning till end tonight. It certainly hasn't worked out that way. And so on first and 10 from the 47. inside the 45 to the 42. Here's what Rohan Davey told us about what he expected today. He basically has told me, you know, you don't, there's no need for you to look over your shoulder at, you know, who's behind you. Don't worry about if you're going to get yanked or, you know, anything like that. We're not rotating. Don't worry about anything. Just go out there and play football. You know, don't think about nothing. Just go out there and play football. Don't wonder if who's coming in after you and how many snaps you're going to get and stuff like that. You know, the preseason is basically over. It's time for us to start our season here with Auburn this week and, you know, just keep it rolling from right down in. 
Meanwhile, Rohan Davy watches from the sideline as Josh Booty hands off, and they lose a couple on the play. Jimmy Brumbaugh makes the tackle. Well, two things, Charlie. First of all, Rohan Davy didn't get a lot of help when he was in there. Bad field position, didn't get a lot of help. Tried to do it on his own. So I'd say you're still going to see Rohan Davy, but. To Jerry Donardo's defense, he needs a spark right now. He needs somebody to come off the bench and wake his football team up. His team is sleepwalking right now, and they need a they need somebody to give him a shot in the arm, and it's got to be Josh Moody. On third down and seven, the former Florida Marlin. Let's see if he's a fish out of water. Or a tiger with a tail. He Pass is incomplete to Gerald Myers. It'll be fourth down. Still not bad, though, Charlie, because there's still 8-16 left to go in this third, in the second quarter, and they, they should pin Auburn down inside the 20 now and let their defense take over. Markeith Cooper will stand back at the 10-yard line, and Corey Gibbs to punt it away. Gibbs with a 41-yard average. A high punt, Cooper. With the fair catch at the 15 yard line. Catch the early sports center a half hour earlier these days, beginning at 6 o'clock Eastern Time, Monday through Friday. Well, they watch mornings, late night, now evenings at 6. Sports Center, your source for sports news as it has been for 20 years and counting. So the early show is a half hour earlier at 6 Eastern, 3 Pacific. First and 10 now for the Auburn Tigers at the 15 yard line and Ben Laird. As Auburn now in his worst field position of the day. And the LSU Tigers. Skeegum Barnes makes the tackle. Now here's what you have right here. Tommy Tuberville, do you gamble a little bit here or do you play it conservatively because their offense is struggling? Or in your LSU, Lou Tepper, now you go after him and you look for a turnover here. And we have a downed LSU Tiger. We have an injured Tiger on the field. Jarvis Green, the 261 pound defensive end. Excellent pass rusher Jarvis Green. He had eight sacks last year and two in the very first game this season. He is face down and now they are rolling him over gingerly. Trying to exercise, it looks like the left arm. Well, not much has gone right for the LSU Tigers to this point. And now an injury as they take a look at the left arm. And he's getting up under his own steam. And it was cut blocked by Jack Swiger, the tight end. Uh, looks like he came down on his arm. Here's the replay, number 80, Jack Swiger. Right here is going to cut him. He comes down on his shoulder. Second down, 10. Landed badly at second down. Clifton Robinson in the backfield now. And there goes Clifton. And he's got nowhere to go. And down at the eight yard line by Jeremy Lawrence. Now the tough call, Charlie, because it's third and uh, a long, long yardage. Now you take a shot, throw the ball, or do you? You have to do something conservatively right now and then punt the ball back to their offense. So Tommy Tuberville and Noel Mazzoni, the offensive coordinator, have a tough call here. Tommy Tuberville on this is 45th birthday. And the SEC opener for both the Auburn and the LSU Tigers. Auburn on third down today. LSU looking for the interception here. And three back is very deep, throwing sideline underneath, incomplete. Intended for Reggie Worthy, it'll be fourth down. Well, the defense did their job. Lou Tepper's group came on, they shut him down. Now they should get good field position for Josh Moody. And Damon Duvall to punt it away. When you're, when you're
you're struggling on offense, Charlie, you're just working for yards, you know, field position. Just give me a little shorter way to go to get the touchdown. Dominic Davis standing back at his own 45 yard line. That's a beauty. Davis from the 47. Run out of bounds and hog tied at the 46 yard line. A 45 yard punt, a seven yard return, and LSU still looking to get its first points on the board this afternoon. I hate grapes. Green and purple. With Auburn leading 17 to nothing halfway through or thereabouts the second quarter LSU offensively didn't do much with their quarterback Rohan Davey but with Josh Booty it looks like they're getting a little bit of life about that time Rondell Mealy is in the backfield by Haven Fields. And Haven Fields just came off the corner there unblocked. Two tackles this year already in the opponent's backfield add another one. I believe Charlie, you and I were talking in the intermission. I would give Josh Booty on first down a little bit more throwing opportunities. I think that's the best down to throw against Auburn. Well, the difficulty, it seems, with both teams is that their coordinators don't seem all that confident with the players that they have, and so they've been rather close to the best they play for. Not that time. The pass is complete to Robert Royal, and that's inside the 40 and down to about the 37-yard line. Linebacker Kenny Kelly made the tackle just a couple of yards shy of the first down. And Charlie, you make a good point because they do know the strengths and weaknesses. They watch them every day in practice, and they've watched them in the game. Robert Royal gets this nice pass from Josh Booty, so they know what they throw best. They know what the running play that they handle best. There's Bob McConnell, the new offensive coordinator. He took over Morris Watts. He's at Michigan State today trying to get points against Notre Dame. So Bob McConnell got uh, upgraded to the offensive coordinator position. Third, and they have got a stacked up backfield, and it looks like Josh Booty got enough for the first down any kind of points here and just before halftime 508 to go on the clock would be big for LSU to go into the locker room regroup a little bit Jerry Donardo be able to settle this his football team down a little bit defensively they they've been up to the challenge they shut Auburn down the two times they were inside the 30 yard line of course Auburn has had four series begin inside LSU territory largely on turnovers and so the LSU Tigers have been far too generous with Auburn and you get a sense that Auburn would have a very difficult time driving the ball 75 80 yards for a score I, I think they would and they have blown two opportunities so let's not forget that they really should have more points than 17 and so if LSU can get uncorked here they can get right back into this ball game they got the first down and here's booty Throwing over the middle and it's incomplete. It was intended for his brother Abram Booty. I haven't seen many better corners than Larry Casher. Larry Casher breaks on the football. He knew exactly when that ball was going to be thrown. Read the eyes of Josh Booty trying to get to, to his brother Abram. You're going to see number 24. Quick break on the ball. Larry Casher with an interception and a fumble recovery all the, already this season. He intercepted a big pass at Appalachian State to preserve the win late in the game. On second and ten. Shuffle pass. Mealy on his feet inside the 25 and a first down. Auburn says it has the ball, but they do not. Haven Fields made the tackle. And so LSU with its first real sustained drive of the afternoon with four and a half minutes left in the half. Nice call by Bob McConnell. Safe. Little shovel draw, shovel pass. Get the ball in the hands of Neely. First and ten inside the 25. And Mealy brought down behind the line of scrimmage by Marcus Washington. Now let's go back to the studio. Brian Kennedy. Or Kenny with an update, Brian. <laughs>
All right, Charlie, we go back to this one. A potential stunner, Wisconsin and Cincinnati. Cincinnati up by two. Ron Dane looking to punch it in, get the Badgers up on top, but he loses the football. Jeff Burrow takes it back in, and it's still 14 to 12. Cincinnati up on top, less than six minutes to go, Charlie. Barry Alvarez has to be every bit as stunned as Jerry DiNardo here. Second and long, Booty throwing across the field to the 20 yard line to Jarrell Myers. You have the feeling that Wisconsin was looking ahead to Michigan. Oh. Cincinnati must not be worried about Ohio State. They got them next week. <laughs> From the What Me Worry School of Football. Clock running with 3.20 to go in the first half. And LSU still trying to put the first points of the game on the board. I think the brother tries to find the brother here. Abram Bruton. Incomplete. He was looking for his brother, but he nearly found cornerback Larry Kasher. Let's go downstairs, Adrian Carson. What do you have? Well, Charlie, here's Abram Moody, two years younger, but one year senior as far as eligibility is concerned to Josh. And Josh, throughout summer ball, I understand, was careful not to use Abram as a primary receiver because everyone expected him to. So he's going out of his way not to throw to his brother. But Abram couldn't be a happy man right now. Two attempts in the last five or six plays here. John Corbello will try a 36 yard field goal. Picked a couple from 50 in high school. That's the way this first half has gone for the LSU Tigers. Well, the Auburn Tiger fans, about 5,000 of them, have had plenty to cheer about today. The LSU Tigers feel like they've been hit. What's different about the People's Bank and Trust Company? We give you access to a full range of investment products. Well, the LSU Tigers came close to their first three points of the first half. And then the field goal try hit the upright, and Josh Booty is down, seeking line. guidance from his offensive coordinator. Auburn first and ten for their own 20, and Clifton Robinson gets maybe a yard or two. So, so Mike, at, at halftime, your team is down 17 to nothing, and nearly nothing has gone right. What does Jerry DiNardo say? He can win this football game. Really, he can he can take his Tigers. troops into the locker room and talk about field position because they have stopped off. Oh, they can't Tigers give them a short field. So I think the same way the first half unfolded, if LSU unfolds it the same way the second half, they can still win this game. Does he go out and say, well, fellas, we can't play any worse than we have and we're still in this game? Is that a, a motivational tool? Well, I think he can say that, but I think he needs to talk about field position, play defense, keep Auburn pinned down, give us a short field. Josh Moody, or one of the quarterbacks, is going to get us in the end zone. Tommy Tuberville, on the other hand, I don't think anybody expected Auburn to have 17 points on the board and certainly not a 17 point lead at the half. What does he say? Can't get conservative, but I like what he's doing right here. He does, he's not putting the ball up for grabs, not trying to give LSU any breaks here. Just want to go into the locker room and say to his football team, hey, we've come of age. We should have confidence now on offense. Our defense is playing great. Special teams is fine. Everything's rolling. Let's just don't go backwards in the second half. You know, Auburn came into the game, as did LSU, both 2-0. And, oh, and Auburn beat Appalachian State 22-15, Idaho 30-23. Undefeated, but coming into this game, not terribly impressive. No, but th that's two wins, though. And that winning breeds winning. You get a little bit more confidence. I don't care who you beat. You beat the Little Sisters in the As long as you win them, you get a little bit better and a little more confidence. And a flag flies. Motion on the offense looked like the left guard Kendall Simmons 73 had the hiccups before the snap movement by the offensive line five yards still second down. You think that caused him to move? <laughs> I don't know of any player that ever had hiccups while they were playing. I guess they did. Well, whatever it was, he uh, <laughs> he moved. He zigged when he should have zagged. Here's Laird throwing long over the middle, and it's caught. And he's going to bust it. Ronnie Daniels fumbles the football. Who's got it? Auburn. And Daniels finishes.
finishes the play with the touchdown. Fred Booker caused the fumble. Ronnie Daniels with the reception, the fumble recovery, and the touchdown. 84 yards later, 23 to nothing Auburn. Well, I like that play. Ronnie Daniels didn't lay on the ground. He got back up and recovered that ball and for the touchdown. And Auburn about to make it 24 to nothing. Just when LSU thought, well, we got a little something going here toward the end of the first half. Ben Laird hits Ronnie Daniels on a streak route. The defenders were up tight. Now he gets a big hit by Booker. But watch him. He doesn't lay down. He gets back up, and he's going to recover this football for the touchdown. That's the word football right there. Do not continue to lay down and kill the grass. Get back up. Ronnie Daniels, as a freshman, showing a lot of speed. Nice hit by Booker. Watch him get right back up. That's great football. That's extra effort and it paid off for seven points. Ronnie Daniels, the freshman, but he's no ordinary freshman. He's 22 years old, celebrated his 22nd birthday yesterday and got his gift a day late. And he was in the minor league system of the Montreal Expos for three years. Really has to regroup his football team after that play. All this and at home to boot. And next week, LSU has to go to Georgia, actually in two weeks. Dominic Davis. At the 25-yard line, now Brian Kenny's got an update. Brian? All right, Charlie, coming up the half, I don't know if we can top that exactly. We're stunned by that. We'll have a preview from the Swamp. We'll hear from Chris Fowler and the boys down in Florida. Also, Penn State and Miami in a real battle. Also, a stunner possibly involving the number eight Wisconsin Badgers. That's coming up for the Halftime Report. Rod Gilmore will join me then. Charlie? Well, to give the lovely and talented Adrian Karsten his due, he was busy talking oh, up did. Cincinnati at dinner last night. He said it was going to be a close ball game to the two people who were listening. I was half asleep. Pass is complete to Robert Roy. And it's and Roy is complete. Out of bounds at about the 27-yard line. Charlie, Cincinnati has beaten some good teams on the past. They beat Penn State in an opener. Uh, 19, I think it was 84, 85. And uh, so they're very capable. Last four or five years, oh, no, they've no. had a fairly decent defense. But how about Troy State? They beat Cincinnati the last week. <laughs> they're going to claim number one. <laughs> Second down and eight at the 28 yard line. And Josh Booting from the shotgun. Firing long over the middle. And it's complete to Jarrell Meyer. Charlie, going back to what Jerry DiNardo is going to have to do at halftime, he's going to have to, he's going to have to chew on these guys a little bit because I look at the sideline and I see a lot of heads down, and they're they got to be they got to be awakened at halftime, and that's your job as a head coach. You've got to bring them back, smelling sauce, and to get back here and play the second half. A little bit with a little bit more intensity. A lot of LSU Tigers on the sidelines looking at their shoes. That's not a good sign. First and 10 at the 47. Booty passes and it's caught by Mealy and he probably would have been best served to drop. Haven Fields made the tackle. Fields is averaging nine tackles a game through the first two and he has been Johnny on the spot. Here in the first half, he already has four tackles this afternoon. Second and 15. And flags fly and whistles blow. If they're moving again. LSU, how about the first half Ben Leard's half? 
Here's Rohan Davey. He was the starter this afternoon. And he told us earlier in the week, and you heard it, that uh, Jerry DiNardo said he was going to stay with him throughout the game. Would not, signals against the defense, five yard penalty, still second. Would not have to look over his shoulder. Well, halfway through the first half, Davey wasn't looking over his shoulder. He was looking from the sideline. Yeah, well, both quarterbacks are going to be looking over their shoulder because they, they need help. Somebody's got to make a play. Wide receiver, running back. We've got a minute and 58 seconds to do something. Booty fires. Incomplete and nearly picked off. And is picked off by Adley Troon. Tipped by Larry Kasher, who's been all over the field today. And Auburn gets another crack at it. Troon's second interception, Charlie. He walked on in 1995, the Auburn football program. Ball just going through the hands of Abram Booty. And the good hands keeping the ball alive by Adley Troon. So now let's see what Auburn does with 24 points already in their hip pocket. They're playing with house money. But instead, they're going to run it right up the gut. Not a bad decision right here, Charlie. Rusty yep. Williams brought down by Jarvis Green. There's a time when you take the house money and you take it home with you. <laughs> you take it right in the locker room at halftime. Look at the turnovers. Sounds like you've been there, coach. <laughs> Never had the house money up. <laughs> Second down and nine. Rusty Williams, a single back. Where's Rusty? Brought down at the 30-yard line by Charles Smith. LSU still has two timeouts. They've got to use them. Well, Jerry just used one of them. Charles Smith, a tackle. So we're going to take a break. Auburn. What? The Southeastern Conference, setting the standard. An unprecedented year in athletic and academic achievements. Twelve member institutions committed to excellence and the promise of the future. The Southeastern Conference, where champions are made. Vests are bulky and hot. Many officers choose not to wear them. Auburn University researchers have developed a fabric for a vest that's lighter, comfortable, and more effective. So more lives will be saved. Like these. Jerry DiNardo and his LSU Tigers have taken a beating here in the first half. There's a minute and four seconds left. Auburn's got the ball third and seven at their own 29. And so Jerry with that timeout, hoping to have some time to get the ball back one more time. Laird firing, sideline, incomplete. Intended for Clifton Robinson. Charlie, that's a safe throw because it's a deep throw. Even if they pick it off, they're behind the 50-yard line. And what I like about that is Tommy Tuberville is showing Ben Lear, hey, I don't care what the score is, and I don't care who we're playing against. I have confidence in you. I like the coaching style of Auburn in this ballgame. And so putting it away now is Damon Duvall. Dominic Davis looking for some blockers and down at the 47 yard line. Coming up on Friday, 10.30 Eastern Time, we're now inside the top 20. The great Martina Navratilova, one of the most dominant women's tennis players ever. Winner of 18 Grand Slam singles titles, including six straight Wimbledon crowns this Friday night. Saw Martina at the opening of the ESPN Zone on Tuesday night in New York and congratulated her. She said, thanks for hitting the little tennis ball. How about that? Here's J. 
Josh Booty throwing a big old football way over the head of Jarrell Myers. How about Ty Cobb, who's 20th? Mm -hmm. I like the way he played the game, and that's the way LSU has to play the game in the second half. Ty Cobb took no prisoners. They're going to have to sharpen their spikes. They got to sharpen <laughs> their spikes in the second half. He played to win. They're going to have to sharpen their focus is what they're going to have to do. Also. On second and ten. 42 seconds left in the half. Josh Booty has his brother Adrian Booty. Over the middle and that has been picked off. Rodney Creighton's second interception of the season. He fumbles and recovers his own ball. Trying to get the ball to Robert Royal, but that's not going to build the confidence of Josh Booty. Rodney Creighton sitting again. The ball is underthrown. The fifth turnover of the first half by LSU. Creighton doing a good job of bumping Royal off his route downfield. And now with 30 seconds left and one timeout. They're taking the house money. That's a favorite play right house. here. But they'll be back out to play again. Auburn. Five turnovers. Forced by LSU. LSU has just had a disastrous first half, and they are hearing from their fans as they go to the locker room. And that's a So it's 24 to nothing. Auburn over LSU will send it now to the Buick Camp. 24 nothing at the half. Charlie Stutter filling in for Ron Franklin along with Adrian Carston on the field and Coach Mike Gottfried up here. Take a look at the scoreboard and it's 24 nothing, but you look at the score sheet. Five turnovers by LSU, but it's been some outstanding defensive play for the Auburn Tigers. It's been the big difference, Charlie. The turnovers and the field position for Auburn. Their defense has really gotten them in a situation where the offense has had short drives. Rohan Davy gets off and the interception right off the bat. Tried to force the football. Then he tries to scramble a little bit, gets hit behind, fumbles the football. Then a couple more interceptions are going to follow. He overthrows the receiver, trying to make something happen. The ball's tipped, picked off, and Auburn has just played very, very well on defense, and then Ben Leard has answered on offense. Field position, just take a look. Auburn's starting field position 20 yards better than LSU. The turnovers have given Auburn 10 points. The passing yards, the total yards, all in the favor of the Auburn Tigers, who will get the ball to begin the Second down. Go downstairs to Adrian Carson. What'd you find out at the half, Adrian? Charlie, as you and Mike supposed, yes, it was Jerry Donato who did most of the talking, if not all of it, in the locker room for the Bayou Bengals at halftime. Basically, it was this. Gentlemen, they got us into shock so early, but it took us so long to get out of shock. Now, I'm going to have more patience with Josh Booty than I did with Rohan Davy. This, of course, is Donato speaking, so expect Booty to continue to go throughout this second half. Said, for all you guys who believe in the magic of this place, if you win after the sun goes down, Notice the shadows, but we need some magic. We need to make it ourselves. We can't wait for anything better than that. Here comes the first play of the second half, and here's Ben Lee throwing on the run, and it's incomplete. Short hop by Reggie Worthy. It'll be second down and ten. Well, Ben Laird really had the first half, Charlie. He's playing with a lot of confidence. Two touchdown passes, 169 yards through the air. Good touch on the long ball. Hits Ronnie Daniels. Came right back to Daniels again. Daniels makes the catch, then gets hit by Booker. It gets up, gets in the end zone for another touchdown. Ben that Laird was the difference in the first half. And Ronnie Daniels is the play of the first half. Staying with it. Passed it in. Knocked out of bounds at the 27 yard line. He is Rusty Williams by Clarence LeBlanc. Charlie, I know it's too early in the ball game to say it's a must play, but if I'm Jerry DiNardo, I know this first series is tough. I, I got to get the ball right back for my offense. Can't let 
Auburn dictate field position. This is a big play in this ball game. If LSU used to have any chance to come back. Rusty Williams checks out. To this point, nine carries and 46 yards. And checking in is Clifton Robinson as a single guy. Coming after him, too. Third and a long three, and Lear's going to throw for it. Over the middle, and it's caught at the 35-yard line, and finally out of bounds, Marquise Cooper, and another first down. A killer play for the LSU Tigers defensively. Offensively, Auburn is on the move again, a pickup of 45. Charlie, the blitz, and look at Auburn picks up the blitz. Then, like Danny Warfel, used to throw the fades he hits marquise cooper on stride against ryan clark that's right on stride that's what you want out of a fade route marquise cooper a good all-purpose player punt returner kick returner in that case big receiver a pickup of 46. Christian robinson loses yardage brought down by lionel thomas and jeremy lawrence well gabe gross started the season at quarterback but ben leard Coaches said knew the offense the best. He could get us in and out of place. You just saw that because LSU third down, three yards to go. They blitz Ben Laird. He pulled the tight end in Swiger to get him maximum protection. Then he hits Marquise Cooper on the fade. That's why he's the quarterback because he knows what he's doing in this offense. And second down and 13. Expecting the blitz again. He's pulling Swiger in again. Expects the linebackers to come. Laird throwing, and he completes it to Marquis Cooper. And he probably loses a couple of yards on the play. Ryan Clark makes the tackle. Let's go downstairs, and here's Adrian. Charlie, Marquis Cooper calls himself one of a handful of reborn Tigers. Two years ago, he was the SEC leader in returns. He was one of the best uh, runners and receivers they had. Then last year, he was almost invisible. He touched the ball seven times. So he touched the ball eight times in their season opener, and now he's right back here in the flow of the things from going from being invisible to the center of the stage here. Reborn is what he calls himself. Three catches, 70 yards today. Third down and 10, and Laird from the shotgun. Over the middle and incomplete, intended for Cooper. And he had the little, the little lizard out there, but I don't think Marquise Cooper looked for the football. Ben Laird knew exactly where to go with the ball, but I don't believe Cooper read the same thing he's reading. The ball thrown behind him a little bit. Damian Woods with a good hit on Cooper. Damon Duvall on for a 44-yard field goal. Drive. Jacob Allen is the holder. From 44. It's on its way. Got it. 27 to nothing, Auburn. The sun may be setting here in Death Valley. But it looks as if the sun is setting on LSU. The sun is beginning to set. And the Auburn Tigers with the first scoring of the second half. Auburn had 17 points in the first quarter, seven in the second. Now three here in the third. And LSU still looking for his first points of the afternoon. Charlie, that three was big because you set the tempo in the second half. Everything you talk about in the locker room, then you come out in the field and you give up a field position in three points if you're LSU. Not good. They're going to need a big play here from Dominic Davis. And he may have one. Knocked out of bounds at the 43 yard line by Roderick Hood. A 56 yard kickoff return. Well, you called it, Charlie. They need a big play, and they need a big play on the special teams. Defense didn't come through, so the special teams does. Dominic Davis had 112 yards rushing last week, and a lot of the coaches that I talked to at LSU said that he reminds them of Kevin Falk. That's the longest career kickoff return for Dominic Davis. Now let's see if the LSU Tigers can capitalize on it. 
first and ten at the 44, and Booty throwing sideline. Incomplete intended for his younger brother, Abram Booty. Tipped by Marcus Washington, I believe, number 82, who's had a excellent game for uh, Auburn on defense. Well, they have leadership up there. They got four senior starters in the defensive line, Reese, Carson, Brumball, and Washington. Well, they have eight defensive starters returning from a year ago, if you include Jimmy Brumball, who actually sat out last year with a knee. And Booty throwing, and it picked up. Oh, and it's just dropped by Rodney Creighton. He's going a long way for nothing. Well, he feels good. He got a chance to run it in the end zone, but he had a chance. He rolled up on uh, Booty, and that's why I said the corners have done such a nice job. Here's the hitch. And both these defensive backs are going to break on the ball. Third down. Yeah. And Rodney Creighton had an interception for a touchdown, just couldn't hold on. Third down and 10. And Josh Booty from the shotgun with his younger brother Abram in motion. And Josh being flushed out by Trondell Mealy, and he gets nothing. And the natives are really restless now as Haven Fields makes his fifth tackle of the ball game. Well, you're seeing the education of a quarterback that when I talked to Bob McConnell this week, he said he's our most natural quarterback talking about Josh Booty, but he's not as far along as Rohan Davey and Craig Knoll is in our offense. He'll be there, but he's not right now. And now the punt and Markeith Cooper. A fair catch at the nine-yard line. ESPN's game plan back for another season on pay-per-view. Over 100 exciting college games, all your favorite teams and conferences from around the country. Check it out for the day or sign up for the season. Water call Direct TV, the Dish Network, or your local cable operator. Charlie Steiner and Mike Gottfried, along with Adrian Karsten, down on the field in a 27 to nothing Auburn lead. 11.54 to go in the third quarter. Clifton Robinson finds a hole and picks up about six yards on the play, and Kendrick Allen makes the tackle for LSU. A little surprise for Auburn this week, playing Clifton Robinson at the running back position. Uh, LSU probably hit didn't have any idea that Clifton Robinson would be back there. Tommy Tuberville trying to find a tailback, Rusty Williams, Clifton Robinson trying to use his material the best he can to plug guys in the right spots. Tommy celebrating his 45th birthday today, and at the moment, celebrating appears to be the right word. There's still plenty of time left here in the second hand. On second down and three, Robinson turns the corner. Steps out of bounds at just shy of the 22. And that should be enough for another first down. Show, show speed. Got around the corner there, ducked out of bounds. Picked up the first down, but showed a little takeoff. And I think the, the fact that the young receivers have come along, you got the little lizard, Marquise Cooper, big play. All of a sudden, they're starting to develop some playmakers. And they're feeling good about themselves. Clifton Robinson is only 5'8 and 176 pounds. First and 10 from the 21. Here's Clifton again. Across the 25. Brought down by Brady James. Maris LeBlanc also in on the play. Mike Pasillo, the right guard, number 79. They're pulling him out a lot on the uh, defensive end and blocking. Right guard right here will pull out, number 79, Pasulo, and he leads Clifton Robinson. When you have a one-back formation, you don't have the fullback leading, so you have to pull the guards. Pasulo, 6'4", Here's Robinson again. The hole is sealed off by Brady James. James has played a good ball game. And when this team and Charlie, you mentioned, they're gaining confidence, and they have a good enough defense to win in this league. 
their offense is suspect coming into the day. Uh, you couldn't tell much about the Idaho and Appalachian State game. But now I think this team, Tommy Tuberville, has used the material the best way possible. And I think you're going to see this Auburn team surprise some people. Third down and a long three. Laird. And it's complete to Lorenzo Diamond across the 35 and another Auburn first down. Roman and Clark by on the tackle. And what I like about this, Charlie, is, is you play to your material. And Ben Leard, you got a third and three situation. You do a nice job with Ben Leard, roll him out. Tonight they've got 285 yards total offense. They have matched halfway through the third quarter what they have averaged through the first two games. It's a pretty good LSU defense. Rusty Williams now back in the lineup, giving Robinson a ball. And Rusty is a bit rusty. Brought down at the 30-yard line by Lionel Thomas. And now if you're Lou Tepper, you got to take some chances because the clock's starting to run a little bit. Auburn getting a little bit of a ground game going loose. Got to try to figure a way to get a, some kind of turnover, change this field position around because it's been a game of poor field position for LSU. Second down and 14. And there it is in the shotgun. Ball count and the quick toss. Tavares Robinson run out of bounds by Lionel Thomas. Let's go downstairs now, Adrian Karsten. Charlie, we all know how parents live and die with what their sons do on the football field and, and their daughters throughout NCAA athletics. Well, consider Kathy Laird, Ben's mother, came to a point where she couldn't even go to the football games anymore with what she was hearing and reading in the papers. So she puts it, she spent her time around the, his apartment cleaning, cooking, listening, and pacing, writing him letters prior to the game, hanging in there with him all the time, finally found what it takes to come back and watch his son. At least she comes home to a clean apartment. <laughs> Third and two. And not that time, Rusty Williams brought down by Johnny Mitchell behind the line of scrimmage. I don't know. And Adrian was talking about Ben Leard, and you know it's tough for parents because they sit there and they listen to the people boo and uh, call their sons names, and uh, it's just very difficult. But I think it's another key, and you're seeing a kid who hung in there and waited for his chance, and his chance has come, and now he's off to a big start this year. Makes it all worth it. Fourth down, five, and Damon Duvall with a high beauty. Dominic Davis with the fair catch inside the 10-yard line. But a good day for Ben Laird and his Auburn Tigers. Hey, here in Bayou Country. But it has been very pretty for its football team. Auburn with a 27 to nothing pace that they're administering on the home team in the SEC opener for both clubs. Josh Booty, who is 6 of 9 for 65 yards when he came into the game, but since then he's 2 of 7 and 2 interceptions. This time he hands it off to Rondell Mealy, and he gets maybe to the 10 yard line and a, a yard gain, if that. The difference in both these teams is one team settled on a quarterback, and LSU still looking. Rondell Mealy. Up maybe a yard, Rohan Davy looking at the plays and wondering what might have been. He started the game today and he was yanked early in the second quarter. Dominic Davis now in the backfield, right next to Josh Booty. Second and long. Davis with his first carry of the day, tripping up the 12 yard line. And Jimmy Brumbaugh and James Collier in on the play. Brumbaugh has had an outstanding game today. And they'll get better on defense because last year in their defensive scheme, they were reading and reacting. This year, they've turned it loose a little bit more. The national defense where you take the front four and you roar them up the football field and you try to free the linebackers up. So they're just grasping a new system. And this is a big play, third and six, deep in their own territory, trailing by 27. They're two of ten and third down tries this afternoon. 
they can ill afford to give Auburn the ball back. In good field position, but that's about to happen again. Good coverage by Rodney Creighton. And when you have a good defense, you've got two good corners. Larry Cash and Rodney Creighton doing an excellent job on the wide outs in this ball game. And so on fourth down, the far too busy Corey Gibbs on to punt it away. And Markeith Cooper standing back at his own 45-yard line. Has to retreat to the 35. And down he goes right there. Damian Woods with an outstanding special team play, a 51-yard punt, and a return of minus two. Auburn gets the ball back, and they are nursing a comfortable 27 to nothing lead. It's been quite a performance this afternoon for Ben Laird and his Auburn Tigers, the junior quarterback. Dawson, Georgia, 13 of 20, 238 yards. And you see how much better he is today than what he did last year. And he's throwing long down the sideline, and it's caught by Reggie Worthy. Inside the 25-yard line. Ben Laird, who has been under much scrutiny around Auburn. In fact, one writer said he wouldn't want Laird to throw him a pass of mustard unless he was wearing, wouldn't want to have him pass the mustard unless he was wearing a raincoat. Now they can take that mustard, all those critics, and put it on their crow because they're going to have to eat it. Ben Laird having an outstanding game today. From the 25. Lionel Thomas brings down Rusty Williams. Gain of a couple. Lou Tepper trying to find a way to slow down this uh, Auburn attack. And I think Tommy Tuberville's got to be surprised at the way they've uh, handled this defense also. He's been able to run, and he's had a couple of very long plays, as we just saw to Reggie Worthy a moment ago. Auburn just continues to run the ball. Here is Rusty Williams. Williams busting a tackle. Now, for the first time, you're beginning to see LSU really dispirited. They're missing tackles, and they're not following up on their blocks and plays. It really came down to, Charlie, that first series in the third, death, in the third quarter when Auburn took the ball out of deep field position and got it down there and kicked a field goal. And I think now you're going to get the nail in the coffin right here if it's not already been delivered. And, you know, defensive coordinator Lou Tepper was under a fair amount of pressure last year and this. And when he says he needs three years to get his defense in gear, you begin to wonder if, if he's got the three years. On third and five, the pass is complete. Marquise Cooper inside the 10 and down at the 7. He, he talked about that, Charlie. I talked to him on the phone. He said, you know, really, you'll see improvement in the defense this year, but you're going to see as we go along and they learn it a little bit better. And it, the tough thing is Jerry DiNardo's in his fourth year and you bring a defensive coordinator in the first year and a new defense and it takes a little time to get it. But uh, Auburn's having their way today with uh, LSU and every phase of the football game. Clifton Robinson is now the single back behind Ben Laird. And here comes Clifton running for the near side. Clifton's going to score! LSU has really become a dispirited lot. Same thing, Priscillo, the guard, Holt, led the blocking. Clifton Robinson was not touched as he scored a touchdown. And, wow, 33 to nothing. You had the sense in the first half that LSU had the ability to come back one or two big plays. But now you get a sense that Auburn has just simply had their way with them throughout this day, and there's still four minutes and change left here in the third quarter. Pasillo's going to pull. Here's a block right here. He's, he's pulling. Tackles back. 
Good block on the outside, and Clifton Robinson uh, gets touched a little bit, but gets in the end zone. And uh, there's a block right here by Geno James, 78. That was Clifton Robinson's first career touchdown. Saturday here on ESPN, College Game Day at 11 o'clock Eastern Time. Chris Fowler, Lee Corso, and Kirk here Street. At noon, Indiana heads to State College to take on third-ranked Penn State. A big win today for the Nittany Lions in Miami. And then at 7.30, Doug Johnson leads fourth-ranked Florida against Kentucky. Kentucky with a win today at Indiana. I talked to several of the Auburn coaches before the ball game, and they expected it was going to be a, a nip and tuck football game, and they weren't sure of their football team, but they're going to be feeling a lot better on that side of the field. Meanwhile, on the LSU side, they still don't know what they <laughs> And from eight yards deep, LSU will put a knee to the turf. LSU will take over first and 10 at their own 20, and Brian Kenny has an update. Brian. Charlie, it looked like it was going to be a perfect day for Auburn fans. Not only the game you have, but Louisiana Tech and Alabama, and Alabama trailing until Sean Alexander had a 76-yard punt return for a touchdown. Then this 30-yard touchdown run got 120 yards on the ground. Alabama up on top. Well, as usual, there will be no shortage of football talk on Sunday morning in the great state of uh -huh. Alabama. Brian believes that bumper sticker, huh? If you're an Auburn fan, you pull for Auburn, and the team is playing for Al playing against Alabama. <laughs> Josh Booty's pass is complete to his brother Abram Booty to the 38-yard line and a first down. Living in Alabama, Charlie, I can tell you, there's a lot of football. People take it very seriously. The, uh, the Auburn people here are. They're not moving. They're enjoying this. Some of the fans who are dressed in purple and gold are beginning to head for the exits. But Lou Tepper is still lecturing his defense on the sideline. His team trails by 34, and Josh Booty is up over center. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. He did it for Ed Dangerfield. Well, Adrian, when he talked to at the start of the second half, and he said, Jerry DiNardo said, I'm going to be a little more patient with Josh Moody. And the reason is he knows he's a gifted talent. He really is a good quarterback, but he's laid off for so long. His skills need to be uh, re refined a little bit, and he needs to learn the offense. Nine out of 19, of course, the big category is the two interceptions. Second down and 10. 37-yard line. Pass from one booty brother to the other. Rodney Creighton runs him out of bounds, but a first down for LSU. First down. Let's go downstairs. Adrian? Charlie, I was sitting in uh, the booty home when uh, the week that Josh was about to make his decision back in 1993. His intention was, everyone believed, to come here as a dual sport athlete, football and baseball. Well, obviously, he took the 1.6 million signing bonus in 1998, started at third for the injured Bobby Bonilla, and here he is. But notice how strong that right arm is, especially thrown to his brother. Wonder where that came from, Charlie. There are not a lot of millionaire freshmen on a ship for and the pass is complete to Terrell Myers. Well, he did a nice job right there, Josh Booty, because he was getting hit by Kenny Kelly in the face as he threw that football. You like that, to see a young quarterback stand in there and take the hit. Second down and a couple. Here's the hit by number 11, Kenny Kelly, right in the face. Backed off a little bit, completed the football. From the shotgun. Pass is complete to the 31-yard line, and that's Dominic Davis. 
Make it to the 33-yard line. Stanford Simmons, the free safety, made the tackle. Sometimes you can win your first two games like LSU did and really not find out anything about your football team. And so this is an important part for Jerry DiNardo to find out how Josh Booty's going to react in this kind of situation. On first and 10 from the 35. Booty's arm is hit as he releases by Rob Payton. It'll be second down. So what does a head coach, in this case, Jerry DiNardo, what does he try to do with two minutes and 55 seconds left in the game? Of course, looking toward a long rest of the season. Well, he's got to answer his quarterback situation. That's the biggest thing. He's got Rohan Davian. He believed he was the best, but he didn't get it done in the first half. So now he's got Josh Moody in it. He's going to take a good long look to make sure he can do it. On second down. Booty's fake, doesn't fake anybody. But what kind of long-term residual damage is there when a head coach, Jerry DiNardo, tells his quarterback, Rohan Davey, you're the guy, you're not going to get pulled out. Then uh, uh, five minutes into the second quarter, he's pulled out. Josh Booty now is the guy that's at least been running the, the offense the rest of the way in terms of credibility, how he deals with his team, how he deals with his quarterback. Well, he's going to sit down with Davey and say, you know, I just felt like we needed a spark, but I'm... I'm not sure whether Davey should be given another chance here in this ball game in the fourth quarter. On third down, Josh Booty's pass is complete to Jarrell Myers. And if he stays with Booty, Booty is the quarterback for the long term. Now they've had a bad week here. Larry Foster, the receiver, uh, got uh, arrested. And so that is swirling around while you're trying to prepare a ball game. So been a difficult week for Jerry DiNardo, and it's getting worse. Larry Foster, not only uh, an outstanding wide receiver, but the team captain suspended following the arrest. On fourth down and trailing by 34 at the 28 of Auburn. Unless you figures, why not? And it's going to be very close. Dominic Davis on second effort appears to have it. Rob Pate made the tackle. Auburn had just exactly the defense that they wanted. Rob Pate just couldn't get a hold of Davis to bring him down. Rob Pate sneaks up the line of scrimmage, and he's in pretty good shape here to stop the draw. Just shows, Davis shows a little bit of strength in his legs at 203 pounds. First and 10 inside the 25. Booty. For the end zone and complete. See, as good as number 24 is Larry Cash, I think it worked the other side. At Dangerfield, the intended receiver, and Larry Casher was going to have no part of it. And he's banged up a little bit in the corner, but Larry Casher is so good. He's staying right with the receiver, Dangerfield, has a chance for Ooh. an interception. The right ankle. Yep. And he is limping off. On second down at the 24. The shuffle pass, and Davis is lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage because Haven Fields once again makes the tackle. And let's go back for an update from Brian Kenny. Charlie, once again, Auburn fans want to know this. Louisiana Tech intercepting Andrew Zhao of Alabama. You can't give Tim Rattay too many chances. Rattay to James Jordan. And Louisiana Tech now with a 21-18 lead over the Crimson Tide. Charlie? This has the makings of a very good day for Auburn football fans. Now I know a lot of Auburn fans are pull for Alabama. May one. Third down and 10. The 11th play of the drive for LSU is their most sustained drive of the day, and the pass is complete to Jarrell Myers. Complete. They'll mark it at about the 12-yard line. Roderick Hood knocked him out of bounds, not before the first down. Yeah, with well, Casher gone now, you can work that side a little bit. Jarrell Myers is a very impressive freshman for LSU. 5'11", the smallish uh, type of receiver. He made big catches in the first two games. Came in here with eight catches for 113 yards in the first two ball games. 
as they work on the right ankle of Larry Kasher on the sideline. Clock running as we head to the end of the third quarter. Rudy's pass is incomplete on the wrong side of Dominic Davis. Now, if you're Auburn and uh, Tommy Tuberville, you, it's an early in the season. You want to pitch a shutout now. You, you think it's important for your defense to hold them out. You'd think with a 34-point lead, you could relax a little bit. But defensively, you want to make sure you set the tempo for the rest of the season. Pretty good defense. You want to keep them out of the end zone. This time, Jarrell Myers flanked way to the top of the screen. 15 of 28, 122 yards for Josh Booty. Looking for the end zone for his brother, and it's incomplete. Guarded by Rodney Creighton in the corner of the end zone. And on the other sideline, you want Josh Booty to have success, get him in there, so he knows he's the man. As you said before, and all the quarterbacks are saying, who's the man here? If Josh Booty can get him in the end zone, I think he's established himself today as the number one quarterback. Well, that's not exactly what Jerry DiNardo had in mind in the beginning of the day on this 15th play of the drive. The last thing in the world he needs is a team that's been beaten up at home and a quarterback controversy, but he gets a touchdown from Ed Dangerfield, including with the touchdown pass. And finally, LSU is on the board. Did you see that? Little hand, Davey. Hands up. Saluting uh, Josh Moody, not standing on the sideline, sulking, but uh, trying to get help for his teammates. John Corbello with the extra point try. He is seven out of seven this year. A little pat on the helmet. You like to see that? As Larry Kasher has yeah. his right ankle worked on. Yeah, and that, that hurt Auburn right there, Kasher being on the sideline. He's been their best cover guy today. And LSU finally with seven points on the board. It took practically three quarters to get there. Josh Booty got good protection. And then the route opens right here at the top at Dangerfield. The safety bit on the underneath route. Dangerfield wide open in the end zone. And that's a confidence builder for Josh Booty. There's a game, Charlie. Idaho and Washington State, they're both playing home games today. Both at the same home, home stadium, and I know who's taking better advantage of it. Well, they like their home cooking better than the other guys. Coming up later tonight at 11 o'clock Eastern Time, Kenny Main and Trey Wingo on Sports Center. Sammy Sosa hit number 60 today. Steve McNair is out and will have back surgery. And a citrus showdown comes Saturday. That's more tonight on Sports Center. 20 years, your source of sports news and highlights. So Kenny and Trey are working late tonight. So LSU with the onside kick, and it doesn't get very far. Or does it? Well, how about that? It just got 10 yards. And Danny Boyd, the kicker, recovered his own onside kick. Well, they look like, I, I agree with Tommy Tuberville. Now, I, I thought they were offside. And I agree exactly with the Auburn coach right here, but the LSU gets the football and gets a chance to get their offense and Josh Moody back on the field, but it appeared to me they were offside. So Danny Boyd with a kick that just managed to go the 10 yards. He kicked it and he recovered it. First and 10 at their own 45 yard line. For LSU. Trying to gain some respectability to get out of this thing with some points. Kenny Kelly was all over Josh Booty. Same blitz from the outside. Kenny Kelly, they're not picking it up, LSU. And Josh Booty having to throw with Kenny Kelly in his face. 
13 seconds left third quarter. Second down, 10, 45 yards. Rondell Mealy. Got a Dominic Davis in the backfield. And flank out. Here's Booty. Going long over the middle. And it's incomplete. Oh, what a defensive play by Rodney Creighton, who is all over Jarrell Myers. Well, just punched the ball out with his right hand. Played it like a professional on that play. 5'8", Rodney Creighton trying to make up for Larry Casher's injury on the other side. But it, just a nice job breaking on the football. Close and right there. Punching it out with his right hand on Jarrell Myers. Perfectly timed play. Man, that was nice. Third down and ten. Booty again. Looking for his brother, finding his brother, Abram Booty. And that should be enough for a first down. It certainly is the last play of the third quarter. So LSU is still trailing by 27, hoping for some miracle. But to this point, it's been all Auburn. Finally showing some signs of offensive life. First and 10 at the Auburn 43. Josh Booty, the quarterback, his brother Abram in motion. And the intended receiver, I'm not entirely sure if it was Abram Booty or the receiver behind him. Charlie, I thought maybe Rohan Davey would get back in, but I don't think so now. I think you're seeing the decision-making process of Jerry DiNardo. He's going to go with Josh Booty. And they've got an open date. You said they have an open date next week, yeah. right? And then they go to Georgia. And I believe you'll see the third straight uh, game where a different quarterback starts for LSU and it'll be Josh Booty. On second down. And again, the question is, with Jerry Leonardo saying very publicly and to his quarterback, Rohan Davey, you're the guy. You don't have to look over your shoulder. Here's a pass. And it's complete to Jarrell Myers. Myers stays in bounds all the way to the 14-yard line. Roderick Hood made the tackle. A pickup of 29 on the play. Because yeah. so getting back to the story about the a question of credibility that a coach has with his players and his team, they, he says one thing, and then five minutes into the second quarter, a change is made. Roy and Davey didn't even have time to look over his shoulder. But I agree with the decision, though, because you needed a spark at that time of the ball game. The game was going downhill fast, and you wanted, and it's unfortunate that uh, Davey has to be pulled out, but you need a spark. Jarrell Myers, nine catches, 100 yards today. And first and ten, Booty pass is incomplete. Intended for Robert Royal. Now let's check in with Brian Kenny for an update. Brian? Charlie, another update with Louisiana Tech and Alabama. Sean Alexander carrying the load. He's up around 30 carries. He's got 155 yards. He's bringing this in. He's got three touchdowns in each of the first three games of the season. Bama up by three. Well, the Crimson Tide, they're not giving up yet. They're lucky they uh, have Sean Alexander mm -hmm. on their ball club. So Larry Casher's day is done. Twisting his ankle on a play in the end zone. It actually momentarily saved the touchdown. On second and ten, Josh Booty. Coming out of the backfield, that's Tommy Banks. And Banks is brought down the market at about the 11 or 12 yard line. Courtney Rose made the tackle. I think the biggest story in this ball game has been Ben Lear. The second biggest story was Auburn took away the run. And Rondell Mealy, who we said was the big marquee player in this game, 12 carries, 23 yards. So Auburn's ability to take away the run, Ben Laird's played field position, just a all been the reason we're 34 to 7. And here's Booty on third and long. Hit as he released the ball by Marcus Washington. And Washington has just had a magnificent day today. Now he was a backer. They put him down and uh, he's tipped balls all day. 
They got to try to get this in the end zone on this play. Josh Booty. On fourth down and eight. To get down to about the four yard line. To get the first down. Booty, two step drop to the end zone. And put it incomplete. Roderick Hood on the play defensively, and Auburn takes over on downs. So LSU next week will have an off week, and then they go to Georgia. And a long SEC opener for the LSU Tigers. NFL Tonight, Tuesday through Saturday on ESPN2. Let's launch it, Slim. We talked about this all week. We gotta stick with the game plan. We gotta run the ball. James says the max protect. Out right, box right, hound right, near right. Zip, 989. Who's James? Use your Visa card and you could win a once-in-a-lifetime NFL fantasy. Play flag football with the pros. Go to the Pro Bowl in Hawaii. Be in a Super Bowl halftime show. Or roam the sidelines before a real game. Visa. It's everywhere NFL fans want to be. First and ten for Auburn at their own 12-yard line. And some hardy LSU Tiger fans are hanging in despite their team down by 27 points. 15 and a half minutes left in the ball game. Right up the middle is Rusty Williams, and Theo Williams, no relation, makes the tackle. Said before the break that LSU will have an off week next week. Then they go to Georgia. Florida comes here. And so not only do they have a a week to regroup and recoup and get their egos back in check. Then they have to go to Georgia and have Florida come here. That open gate's going to come in big for them because they're going to need an extra period of time to get this ball club back. On second down and seven. Rusty Williams gets back to the line of scrimmage and maybe a yard. We talk about Georgia's schedule in Auburn. Uh, I'm talking to Tommy Tuberville the other day on our phone hookup. It becomes very tough. You get Ole Miss, which is going to be a big game for him. He left the Ole Miss program, and they're going to come back uh, one his hide. And then they go to Tennessee and Mississippi State, one today against Oklahoma State, Florida, Arkansas. So they've got five games there that are going to tell a lot about their season. Clifton Robinson checks back into the lineup in the backfield behind Ben Laird. And Tommy Coverville, Cheshire Green on his 45th birthday. Staying comfortably ahead. Here's Clifton Robinson. Brought down behind the line of scrimmage by Mark Roman. This series was to run the clock. Mark can see Williams going to the sideline. He was not not going to run out of bounds. Mark Roman, free safety last year. They moved him to corner so that Ryan Clark could play the safety position. Uh, six interceptions they had coming into the ball game, but they have not been able to get Ben Lair. Who has had an outstanding day. And Damon Duvall to punt it away. With Dominic Davison all the way back to the 29-yard line where he's forced to make a fair catch. Let's go downstairs now, Adrian Carson. Adrian. Charlie, thank you very much for pulling in for Ron this evening, who unfortunately had to attend a funeral this afternoon in Memphis, Tennessee, for his father-in-law, O.E. Smokey Furness. Our best to Ron, his wife, Bonnie, their son, R.F., and the entire Franklin and Furness family. We're all very good friends. We send nothing but our best to them from the entire primetime college football family. Safe for me up here, and thanks for uh, Echo bringing us along today. Has made it awfully easy. Enjoyed being with you, Charlie. Good to see you, Coach. On uh, first and ten for LSU. Indeed, our thoughts are Ron and his family. A fumble, and Auburn's going to pick it up. 
That's what when James you talk Callier, 51. Yeah, when you talk to LSU coaches, they said Josh Booty's not sure about the offense. Tavares Pounds came off the corner. He didn't see it. And the quarterback has to see the blitz from the blind side. The sixth turnover of the day. He did not see it. Right off the corner. Pounds. Didn't feel it, didn't see it. Coughed up the football. Auburn in good shape. He pounds booty into the ground is what he did. First and 10 at the 19-yard line. Clifton Robinson, the single back. And he's going to eat up the clock and a bit of real estate to boot. Byron Dawson made the tackle. And now with 11 minutes and counting left. No Minnesota wins today. As we take a look at our 28-58 scoreboard, Colorado feasting on Kansas. Jerry DiNardo having a conversation with his quarterback. He knows he's got to learn. He's got to learn the system. Got to learn defenses. Second down, ten and a half minutes left. He still has it, Larry does, and it's going to be a touchdown for Auburn. Jack Swagger, who last week had his first career touchdown pass, this week it's his second. The Ben Laird show. Wasn't supposed to be that one. And Jack Swagger, the senior tight end, with the first touchdown pass of his career last week and has just doubled his touchdown pass output. It took four years to get two. And Damon Duvall with the extra point. 41 to 7. Tigers! Yay, Tigers! And so the Auburn Tigers. A happy lot. Not so the LSU Tigers. And the points? <laughs> he won't need it. <laughs> Just how bad he's going to be. Like a rented mule. Yeah. You won't be able to tell a nickel from a quarter when he's done with you. <laughs> Something about heads or tails. Our lineup next Saturday on ESPN 2, noon Eastern time. Heisman hopeful Drew Brees looks for another Big Ten win when 14th ranked Purdue hosts Northwestern. And then at 6 o'clock, number 9 Miami takes on East Carolina, followed by Virginia and Red Hot BYU. That's next Saturday on ESPN Part 2. A couple of good games there. Yeah. Virginia and BYU will be interesting. Kevin Federick off to a big start for BYU. Josh Booty, 19 of 39, 177 yards, a couple of picks, and they are just teeing off on him now. His intended receiver was his younger brother, Abram Booty. Yeah, what Adrian talked about, Abram Booty and... Josh trying not to throw to him. He's tried to go to him a bunch here in this ball game, and uh, but he was the open receiver on that play. He ran an option route. May have been held a little bit. Didn't get a call. Just wonder what it's going to be like around these parts this week for Jerry Denardo. He came into this season under some duress after a disappointing year last year. Doesn't look like it's going to get any better anytime soon. The pass is incomplete and was headed for Jarrell Myers. This is some serious adversity facing LSU and their head football coach. That's why it's good to have an open date. Because you get a chance to rebound and you get a chance to get your coaches in, evaluate this tape. Still two and one. Still a lot of football to be played. LSU's worst home loss under DiNardo up until today. November 9, 1996 against Alabama. 26 to nothing they lost. Here's Abram Booty, and he is brought down past the 40-yard line by Kenny Kelly, a pickup of 23. Coming up next from the Bent Tree Country Club in Dallas, Texas, second round coverage of the Senior PGA Tour Bank One Championship. It's nine minutes and 50 seconds or so, and count it. 
Rudy and Dominic Davis. Charlie, another big part of this ball game was Joe Panunzio and the special teams for Auburn. They really set everything up in pretty good shape in the first half. So Joe Panunzio and uh, Tommy Tuberville, and the whole coaching staff is going to feel a lot better about this game. Well, you also had six turnovers that contributed to this. And a lot of folks have left early, and Tommy Tuberville is celebrating his 45th birthday this afternoon on enemy turf, but he will go home a conquering hero. Second and seven. That's Tommy Banks with his second reception of the day to the 45-yard line brought down by Courtney Rhodes. And while we're giving out footballs here and praise John Lovett, Defensive coordinator for Auburn takes over the job this year. First coordinator uh, situation at Auburn for John. So the a good defense to work with. I was going to say the Auburn football program, in essence, is under new management. Having put the Bobby Bowden regime out, brother Bill Oliver, the Terry, Jarrell Myers with the catch. And so you have a whole new coaching staff. And certainly based on today, they have, the players have responded well for them. I said their toughest game of the year was Appalachian State because they couldn't afford to lose that game. And it was a battle. They had a chance to lose that game. They, they won it. And then the players start to buy in. Now the players today will completely buy into the system now. Tommy Tuberville and his assistant coaches will no longer have any problem when they say anything because this team knows now the way this game was played. They took a few chances early in the ball game for buying into the program. Auburn knows tough. Last year, despite a, a woeful record, they also played against the toughest schedule of anybody in the NCAA. And for they're at home with Ole Miss and then Tennessee in the next couple of weeks. Marcus Washington again with the defensive pressure. But you had no idea what to expect out of Auburn coming into this game. They didn't know. Because they struggled so mightily in the first two games of the season. First against Appalachian State holding on. To beat him 22-15. That was the game that the Bowden father and son tandem was supposed to play against Florida State. And then they hold on and beat Idaho 30 to 23. Brandon Whiney of LSU slow to come off the field now. It's been a long, painful afternoon for the home team. Well, you talked about their schedule. Now, now they're off to a good start, 3-0, but they still got to find a way to win a certain number of games to get to a bowl game. But they, their confidence is, has got to be helped with this effort, especially on an away game when you completely dominate an SEC team. And they found the quarterback. Ben Laird is a, been a pleasant surprise today for Auburn. And Dominic Davis, close to the first down. Let's go back to the studio now. Brian Kenny with an update. Brian. Thank you, Charlie. Air Force in Washington, home opener for Rick Neuheisel. Air Force up on top, 14-6, but Braxton Cleveland going in there. Two-yard run. They got the two-point conversion. Tied up, 14-14 Air Force in Washington, Charlie. So Rick Neuheisel feeling some kind of pressure today to perform in his home opener and Tommy Tuberville in his first SEC game as the head football coach of Auburn. And fourth and one in the backfield. Dominic Davis will have the first down. An impressive young back, Davis. Well, you know, you mentioned earlier about Rondell Beely, who for three years played in the shadow of Kevin Falk. And today he had a chance to do something, and he did. A 12 carry, 23 yards. Didn't get much blocking opportunity. And, uh, as Adrian Carson said, maybe a little hurt. Pass to the sideline. Booty is unable to hold on. Juggles it out of bounds. Let's go downstairs to Adrian. Yo, Adrian. 
More than a little bit hurt, as a matter of fact, Charlie. He walked past me, started the third quarter into the locker room. They put one of those uh, sleeves around the high point in his thigh to protect his groin that was pulled slightly in the first half. Then they taped over the top of that. He hasn't seen any action here in the second half. Point being, that off date next Saturday is going to be very important for this team down the stretch. He really the marquee player on offense. So Dominic Davis getting an opportunity to run with the ball a bit here in the second half, even though his team is trailing now by 34. Moody's pass is incomplete. The intended receiver at Dangerfield, unable to handle it cleanly. And again, Rodney Creighton has had an outstanding game covering the uh, the receivers out there. That's That was a nice throw by Josh Booty. That should have been brought in. Dangerfield was open, had the football, and, and Booty's showing some good things. The only problem with it, there's not any heat on right now, Charlie. So he's performing without any heat on. But he's still doing a very good job. There's Nall, who started the first game, didn't feel like he should have been yanked. And he, talking in the paper, he said he didn't feel like he had the opportunity to show himself. On the 13th play of the drive, it's incomplete into the end zone. But that's the problem. He, he only got one football and three quarterbacks. Lots of arms crossed, helmets off. What a shoot top watching on that LSU sideline. On fourth and ten. As you can see, what was once a sold out Tiger Stadium is emptying in a hurry. Here's Booty. Auburn will take over on downs. The intended receiver was at Dangerfield. Auburn led 17 to nothing after one. And 24 nothing at the half. The second half, Auburn has outscored LSU 17 to 7. Thus, your 41-7 score. Well, they call it Death Valley, but that's generally meant for the opponent. LSU has just been pulverized. Jeff Klein is the new quarterback as Auburn's Ben Laird take a well-deserved rest on the sideline, leaving with his team up by 34, and Heath Evans with his first carry of the day out across the 25-yard line. There's Ben Laird. What a day he's had. Well, Ben's had a remarkable day. Hits Ronnie Daniels in the first quarter for a touchdown, wide open down the left corner. He came right back, hit Daniels in the second quarter, and after a fumble, he covers his own fumble in the end zone, and then hits Jack Swiger across the middle, tight end for the touchdown. So Ben gets a needed rest. Jeff Klein in the ball game, performed well in fall practice. Matter of fact, the last scrimmage, there was some talk that he had won the job. And once again, he's heaven. And so for those who said of Ben Laird, they wouldn't want to have him pass the mustard unless they were wearing a raincoat. They can, yeah, they can eat some crow today. That's right. They deserve to eat crow. Some ball games for Ben Laird. Coming up next from the Bent Tree Country Club in Dallas, Texas, second round coverage of the senior PGA Tour, Bank One Championship, to be seen in its entirety. Six minutes and counting. Auburn fans all over the country with smiles on their face because they've seen their football team fight back. Had a lot of adversity with what happened last year and the media scrutiny and all those things and we played very well here. This is a huge win for them. The pass is incomplete. Intended for Tim Carter. As we look around at a rapidly vacating Tiger Stadium, there is just one area of the ballpark where there is where it's still filled. Well, the band, right at the bottom where the all band the, has to stay. The band has to stay. And so do the Auburn, Auburn Tiger fans. fans. Yep. They have a long ride home, and there's some dejected LSU fellas <laughs> waiting for traffic to clear on second and ten at the 31-yard line. Devin. He's a bruiser, isn't he? Well, he broke his foot in the ball game last year, the LSU game. He caught a 
54 yard touchdown pass in that ball game and broke his foot later in the game was was out most of the year and uh, worked his way back in he was a good looking fullback last year good size six feet 228 I'm not sure that uh, Jerry DiNardo wants to hear the sports talk here on Monday you don't want to hear it tonight <laughs> forget about Monday well, he's got the off week next week we'll do the LSU Tigers but it is going to be uh, some nasty talk around these parts and again Keith Evans and at this point Auburn all they want to do is just eat up the clock Jarvis Green made the tackle there he is Ben Laird with an outstanding performance getting much deserved congratulations not a bad idea now if you're Auburn not playing Florida State in the opening game no because you could have got all your confidence blown out in the first week of the season now you've got a 3 and 0 football team feels pretty good about themselves and Auburn fans now know they got a chance in every ball game now well they had trouble with Appalachian State and Idaho in the first two games and so Auburn and Coach Tucker's there, the players, the fans, everybody. Really not sure what they have. And so they come out here today, and certainly with some degree of help from LSU and all those turnovers. But they made the most of it. And Rondell Mealy hurt with that cold groin muscle early in the game. He sat out all the second half. I've been impressed with Auburn. Now, I'll tell you, the, uh, the way this team played together, Special teams, Joe Pananzio, offense, no Mazzoni, love it on defense. Tommy Tuberville making the decision to fake the field goal. All those things get a loose team, and they play loose, and they play with confidence. With the clock running, the pass is complete to Marcel Willis, and that's his first catch of the day. So Auburn with over 400 yards of total offense. Now 412 on the day. LSU has 300 yards, but they certainly haven't been able to All put it together. All between the 20s. Yeah, yeah. And Lou Tepper, the defensive coordinator for the LSU Tigers. Been a real long day for him and his unit. Well, this is the time of the game now where both teams just want to keep from getting hurt. Jeff Klein throw. That's good looking pass, isn't it? Well, you, if you're on Auburn now, you, you you like playing this now. There's three minutes to go, and Jeff Klein's getting a chance to air it out. Cooper's getting a chance to catch a football. Line gets a chance to protect it on the other side now. Take it to the house. You want to finish strong, though, if you're an LSU football player. Don't want to let him get in the end zone. Markeith Cooper, five receptions today for 105 yards. Michael Owens is now the tailback behind Jeff Klein. That's a good-looking pass thrown on the run. On first and ten. Well, Charlie, you never know when you're going to need your second quarterback, so he has to throw, and he has to do some good things, and, and you've got to try to score because Klein... Uh, maybe your quarterback in the next ball game if an injury occurs. Jeff Klein is a redshirt freshman from Alpharetta, Georgia. Good size, 6'3", and 196 pounds. Gabe Gross, who now uh, will be the third team quarterback for Auburn, he started the season as a starter. As the clock continues to run. And here is Owens. Run out of bounds at the five-yard line, and Brian Kenny has an update. Brian. Charlie, Alabama leading Louisiana Tech 28-22. Final seconds. You see it there. Five seconds left. Fourth and 23. Tim Rattay is knocked out of the game. Sophomore Brian Stallworth in the air. Sean Pangelosi. It's tied up 28-28. It's now a final. 29-28. Point after was good. Final seconds. Louisiana Tech beating Alabama. My. Oh, that's, yeah. that's a shocker. That's the second time. Jack Bicknell, um, new coach of Louisiana Tech with a big win. Gary Croton moved on to the Bears and 
Jack McNeil, son of uh, Boston College, Jack McNeil. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, the state of Alabama belongs to Auburn tonight. Auburn and Troy State. Because <laughs> they're still claiming number one, Troy State. This is the worst home loss to Auburn since the very first time they played here. That Y2K to kick over. Follow me to freedom. The clock running and now two minutes left in the game. That time, Keith Evans gets nothing. Kareem Mitchell, 97, made the tackle. It's a tough loss for Alabama, Charlie. Right. Tough, tough loss. Coming up in just a couple of minutes from the Bentry Country Club in Dallas, Texas, second round coverage of the Senior PGA Tour Bank One Championship, and it will be seen in its entirety. And for LSU, this thing can't end fast enough. Trying to eat up the clock, and he doesn't want to go out of bounds, but it does. Kareem Mitchell ran him out. I would think Tommy Tuberville is just trying to run the ball right now. He's he's got what he wanted out of Jeff Klein. He threw a couple passes down there. I don't believe he wants any more points on the board. Well, I guess it would be pointless. We'll find out here if he throws, though. <laughs> Wouldn't that be awful? Shotgun, it probably is going to be a draw. Uh, fourth down and goal from the 11. What is Take back what I said. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. And it took the sack. Theo Williams reports the sack. On Jeff Klein. Well, that'll anger up the LSU folk. We're going to take a break and come back for the final one minute and three seconds. It's been all Auburn. All Tommy Tuberville spends his 45th birthday in Death Valley and gets a shower as a birthday present. And Joe Witt, too, the assistant. They're happy to accept. First and 10 at the 31, and Josh Booty going to finish it out. Our Visa players of the game. Booty's pass is complete to Terrell Myers. From Auburn, quarterback Ben Laird. What a day he had. 16 of 23, 304 yards, three touchdowns. And much like the entire Auburn team, they had no idea what to expect, and Laird came up big. Jarrell Myers. Had an outstanding day for LSU, 10, or 10 receptions for 112 yards. Inside the final minute. Booty's pass is complete to Jarrell Myers. Well, you go from thinking about quitting, he said that was never an option because he said, I've never quit anything. And he said, I don't care if I'm the third team quarterback, I'm going to be a part of the program. He wasn't going to walk away. He helped the other two quarterbacks last year. Here's a guy that got beat out. And then he sits with the other quarterbacks, coaches them up so they can go in the ball game and do the right thing. Just a great, when you see a great attitude kid, good things happen. Ben Laird is now a lot more than part of the program. He is right in the middle of the program. Jarrell Myers makes the catch. Coming up on Thursday on ESPN, Brandon Streeter, the Clemson Tigers look to end up or up in 10th ranked Virginia Tech in Blacksburg. The Hokie defense has been impressive so far, allowing just 10 points in two games. Coverage begins at 7.30 Eastern with Thursday game night immediately after Sports Center. Virginia Tech let them have it last year, too, at Clemson. The special teams play of the Hokies has got to be... I can't think of a, a team that's any better, spends any more time on special teams than the Hokies. Dominic Davis brought down and stays in bounds, and that means the clock will continue to run. There appears to be some nefarious conduct about to be undertaken. And the golf is coming right up. Pass is complete. 
Josh Booty to his little brother Abram. And here comes a mini bat. Well, Adrian's about the biggest guy on the side. <laughs> yeah, they wouldn't do that to Adrian. No. Well, LSU calls a timeout. So we'll take one, two, with 10 seconds to go. Incomplete. And it leaves so him with one play, Charlie. One play to go. And who should they throw the ball to? I think it would probably be a good idea to throw it to Jarrell Myers. The reason being, he's got 13 receptions on the day. The school record for most catches is by Wendell Davis. Back in 1986, 14 catches. For 208 yards. Well, let's see what they do, see if they can find it. The end zone is complete. Intended for Ed Dangerfield, and the killing has finally ceased. And it was a nasty beating today, administered by Auburn over LSU 41-7. Coming up next, senior PGA Tour golf from Dallas, Texas. Our primetime game next Saturday night, fourth-ranked Florida takes on Kentucky. For Mike Gottfried and Adrian Carson, Charlie Steiner saying good night from Baton Rouge. ESPN, proud to celebrate another moment from our first 20 years. For more, log on to ESPN.com, part of the Go Network. Go.com, ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports.